Hello everybody that is here, very happy to see all of you on the other side of the screen. Today we continue the installation of our next block. This will be a regular Vector 2 without active backplate, so we can compare how active backplate version working against passive backplate version. So we will continue with our quick guides for quick installation. Also it will be very similar to active backplate with exception of installing passive backplate instead of second water block essentially on the other side of circuit board. Nevertheless I decided to while I'm doing it I will be filming it. Let's quickly look what we have in the box. We have a block itself which is uh, consists of two parts backplate and the block and backplate attached to the block for just transportation purposes and we have uh, two boxes with accessories which contain PCI bracket with a little bit of uh, tools and thermal paste and second package contains set of thermal pods one for the backplate another one for the block itself plus set of the screws that we need to use to assemble the entire thing together. So first step traditionally will be removing backplate and tightening all those poles that sits under in case of they got a little bit loose so you need to check that all right after removing all seven screws the back plate can be taken off you remove this protective piece of carton and we have a block and back plate separated from each other and the step two would be attaching the bracket to the back plate and then we can continue with usual installation of all the thermal pod business and things like this. So let's just do that. figure out which uh, correct screws you actually need to, to use. It is M3 6 millimeter. Okay, let's look for something like that in our set of screws provided. not big fan when you have to use different type of screw heads if you use Philips why not to use Philips everywhere anyways I digress here alrighty so our next step is will be installing thermal pods and thermal paste on a PCB which means that we need to put block aside take our card which is already cleaned I already used my Arctic Clean solutions to remove all grease and thermal paste from previous installation and we can just put all the thermal pods in place according to the manual that you need to print out. It will take probably about 15 minutes to do so, but um, I'll spare you from watching it and we just magically make it happen in a few seconds. And here we go. If you do it all correctly, you have 16 areas covered with thermal pods. You even have one full thermal pod left and some scraps as well. So the last step will be putting thermal paste and we will proceed with installation of the card on the first half of GPU block. Again, my personal preference, I usually purify all surfaces 
and I recommend you to do the same. Some of you who may pay attention, I had a different bracket attached to PCB from a previous installation, I remove it now because we have a bracket that comes with the block itself, AK version, and um, also for ease of installation good idea to put block on some sort of flat box so the block stay flat otherwise sticking bracket will will have it under the angle it will be awkward to install and uh, okay let's just um, lower it in position and just need to align all the screws screw holes with a proper locations and I usually give a little wiggle for the entire PCB so the thermal paste will sit properly as well as thermal pads so here we go we put it in place and we just need to put all the screws starting with the middle ones that we need to tighten across manner fashion as well as we also need to put the washers between each screw and the PCB which will take a little bit of time and I'm going to spare you from watching this process which is not very exciting after all screws in place notice that some holes still remain open because we still need to attach back plate later so make sure you don't put screws in the places where not, they're not supposed to be. Consult the manual. And final step to put more thermal pads on this side of the circuit board. Note that we have a two sizes. Some places we have a two millimeter pads. In other places we have one millimeter pads. So pay attention where which one goes according to the manual again. Alright, after 20 painful minutes, all back plates of correct size are installed and we can put back plate in place. It's actually pretty easy for this particular model because we have those uh, cutouts on both parts and it's make it a uh, pretty easy process to put it in exact position right where the, all the screws are much easier than with many previous models and final process is putting screws in place and we will get our final result and we're done everything is installed back plate front plate so we can put it on a quick pressure test just in case and put in a system and get some numbers so we can see if uh, active back plate give you significant advantage worth its money or we can just go with a passive cousin and be happy with that thank you for watching i see you soon with the next video